بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هتكلم على الهاي ميكانكس اوف فود In the foot we have lots of bones and lots of joints, but what we should remember that no one move in isolation. Okay, no movement, no joint move in isolation. Usually they move in a conjoint movement of all the joints and uh, uh, bones of the foot. What we want from our feet? We want them to absorb shock of the body weight during loading. We want from them to, uh, to be able to adjust to adjust to different terrains and irregularities on the ground. And we make them to become a rigid lever capable of forward function. So at times, we want foot to be supple, flexible, shock absorbing starch. And at the same time, or at different times, we want it rigid lever to provide propulsion. In this lecture, this is the core of, uh, of my lecture, is to describe how to become flexible and supple foot and how to become a rigid one. And this could be explained through exam e explaining the kinematics and the kinetics of the feet. <laughs> kinematics of the foot, we have <coughs> an ankle joint, subtalar joint, talonavicular joint, calcinocuboid joint, and the talonavicular and calcinocuboid joints are called the mid -tarsal joints. The ankle joint, it is, uh, 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 the movement of the ankle joint is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. But the ankle is not that simple flexion, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion because its axis of movement is conical with the apex medial and the base lateral. So medial uh, plantar flexion is usually accompanied with internal rotation of the talus and the internal rotation of the whole foot. And dorsiflexion is accompanied by, sorry, and dorsiflexion is accompanied by external rotation of the talus and the external rotation of the whole foot. The subtalar joint is a very important link between the ankle and tibia and the mid dorsal joint and the rest of the foot. The movement of the subtalar, it is just valgus and varies at the level of the subtalar joint. The mid dorsal joint is a very complex structure. It allows circumduction it allows some degree of abduction, adduction, and it allows some flexion and extension. So if this mid tarsal joint is mobile, it is called unlocked. The foot is totally flexible. It could accommodate to the ground and could absorb shock. It is flexible structure. But if it is get locked, the foot will become a rigid one. So, the movement of the foot in the sagittal plane, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, is a transverse plane, abduction and adduction. Adduction and abduction occur at the level of the mid tarsal joint, and the component of fat occur also in the ankle. And the frontal plane, inversion and diversion occur at the level of the subtalar joint. But actually, the movement is not that simple. It is a 3D movement, what is called supination and pronation. Supination, it is a plantar flexion, plus abduction, plus inversion. And to define supination, the sole of the foot is facing inward. And pronation, it is the reverse. Those flexion, abduction, and reversion, and this is called the, the sole of the foot is facing outward. So pronation, the sole is facing medial, and so, so supination, the foot is facing medial, and pronation, is the, the sole of the foot is facing lateral. And this combined or triplanar movement actually occur at the level of the ankle, subtalar, and mid tarsal joints. How do these joints work in harmony? Isay the joints did the shadat ma'abat. This 3D movement. And if they have the mid tarsal joint, and that from up, from down, up, the mid tarsal joint, to be unlocked and to be mobile, the heel should be in inversion. This means the subtalar joint should be inverted for the mid tarsal joint to be unlocked and to be mobile. But when the, 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 the heel or the subtalar joint is in inversion, the, the mid tarsal joint will become locked. Or if we start by locking the mid tarsal joint, then the heel should be inverse. There is a term introduced uh, 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 by Concetti that what's called calcineo this block. There is a link between the forefoot and the calcineo. So when I do abduction of the forefoot, automatically the, the, the heel should go into various. And when I do abduction of the forefoot, 
the heel should be should go into valgus. At this valgus position, the mid tarsal joint will be unlocked, and in this valgus position, the mid tarsal of the uh, joint will be locked. The subtalar joint it act like what's called metal hinge. Metal hinge is what they the hinge will be how the axis movement into another axis. The Arabic. If a, if a rotation of the proximal segment will produce rotation of the distal segment in the opposite direction. And if we try the opposite rotation, it will produce an opposite rotation in the distal fragment. Remember that I can start the movement from proximal and I can start from movement from the distal. It will produce the same effect in, in a controversial manner. So if we did internal rotation of the leg, the heel will be pronated and the foot will be pronated, the heel in valgus and the mid tarsal joint will be supple, will be flexible. If I did the reverse for foot rotation, external rotation, then the heel will go into various and the foot will go into supination. We can start it from distant. By flattening of the foot, the tibia will internally rotate it. And supination of the foot, the tibia will be externally rotated. Look at this video. <coughs> With inversion, the tibia rotate internal, and with supination, the tibia will rotate external. Look how we can change the rotation of the tibia by changing the position of the foot. This is what uh, Dr. Khaled did mention before. Okay. How to describe foot movement? Describing the foot movement, either the open kinematic chain. What is meant by open kinematic chain? It's describing the joint movement or the foot movement when it is in the air. Okay, and <clears throat> this orbit kinematic change we can describe plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, abduction, abduction, supination, and pronation. This open chain description in the swing phase. <coughs> swing phase means that the foot is off the ground. They were to run, I just run the normal gait mechanisms. And the closed kinematic chain motion, this means that description of the movement with the foot is on the ground and carrying the body weight. When the foot is flattened, the, 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 the heel in valgus and the tibia is internally rotated. When we do pronation, subination, the foot becomes into inverse and the tibia will externally rotate. So, in this position, when I'm standing and the heel in valgus, I know that the, once the heel in valgus, the foot is supple and the flexible and the mid-tarsal joint is mobile. And this is a flexible foot that can adapt to the ground and can absorb shock. But once I'm standing like that, the heel should go into inversion and the tibia into external rotation and the mid-tarsal joint should be locked to provide a rigid fulcrum or a rigid lever to provide propulsion and to carry on the body weight. So to remember, the subtalar joint, once it is in valgus, the mid tarsal joint should be supple and the, the tibia in internal rotation. And once it is in varus, the foot is supinated and the mid tarsal joint is locked and the, the, the tibia is external rotated. We can just start chain from the tibia downward and we can start the chain from the foot upward to the tibia. But these joints should occur with each other and these groups should occur with each other. <laughs> Pronated foot, normal foot, and supinated foot. What occurred during gait? During the stance phase, phase, as I told you, it is a closed chain description. Okay? And during the swing phase, the foot is off the ground, we are describing an open chain movement. So during the stance phase, what I expect during loading, during loading and the contact phase, I want it supple or rigid? Supple. supple. I want them on my I put here a the foot the heel is in in, in, uh, in inverted. The mid tarsal joint is flattened. The forefoot is abducted. The tibia is internally rotated. Okay. Once you want it supple, supple. When during propulsion you want it rigid. So the the foot is abducted. The the forefoot is abducted. The mid tarsal joint is locked. The heel is inverted or inverse, and the tibia is externally rotated. So once we know what we want, we can describe the, the motion so easy. So during stance phase, the movement or the foot uh, 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 
move from pronation supple foot into supination, which is a rigid foot. And once we finish the stance phase and start the swing phase, we have to bring the foot again from supination to pronation to prepare it to start a new stance phase in a pronated position. Okay, if, uh, if, if a swing phase, this we are preparing the foot again to start a new cycle on a stance phase where the foot pronated and supple to absorb shock. So during contact, the heel is the first touch, uh, point of the heel, the, the foot should touch the ground to force the heel into valgus. This is the point, the uh, maximum way to choose tighten the lateral part of the heel because touching the ground and loading of the foot at this point will force the heel into valgus because I want the heel into valgus to, to make the mid tarsal joint supple. And once I touch the ground in this way, the tibia will be forced into internal rotation. During push up the, the, uh, or propulsion, the, heel, the, the foot has to be rigid and the heel has to go into various. حاجتين مهمين ممكن نتكلم عليهم ميتا تارسل بريك دايما نسمع على حاجة اسمها ميتا تارسل بريك الميتا تارسل بريك بص length of the ميتا تارسل are not equal they are shorter on the lateral side and longer on the medial side طب ده بيعمل ايه increase supination at propulsive phase ازاي بص للصورة دي because the ميتا تارسل are not equal once I'm standing on the toes the, the foot has to go into adduction because the, the fifth one is shorter than the first and second one. This, this abduction of the forefoot, I am really, the calcaneo be this block. I am really on a tool, locking of the metatarsal joint, inversion of the heel. This is a passive mechanism by which I can make the foot a, 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 a strong lever without any muscle activity. This is a passive mechanism to provide a rigid column by the, the foot. The passive mechanism is also used by the action of the, or the axis of motion of the ankle. As we said, the ankle and plantar flexion is an internal rotation. It is an internal rotation of the foot. So that also helps me passively in that I have a rigid column without any active mechanisms. And that is the relationship that is present between the metatarsal joint and the subtalar joint. لو عايزين نوصف الليج روتيشن انا عرفت ان ان ذا كونتاكت فيز بيبقى البرونيشن وشويه شويه السوبانيشن بيزيد يبقى الليج روتيشن هيبقى هنا ايه؟ انترنال ولا اكسترنال؟ انترنال يبقى ويب ان ستانس فيز ات ستارت ويز انترنال روتيشن اند ذن بروجريس تو اكسترنال روتيشن اند بروبالسيف فيز ازاي الفوت ابزورب تو ابزورب شوك؟ ازاي تقدر تو ابزورب شوك؟ هو المساحب في العربيه او شوك ابزوربنج ميكانيزم في العربيه بيشتغل ازاي؟ لما بتقابل مطب بيقصر وبعد كده يدخل تاني. اوكي؟ هو دي نفسها الميكانيزم اللي فيها الفوت بتابزورب شوك. خلاص؟ اتشورتن ذا ليفل. ازاي؟ لما بعمل كونتاكت او هيل سترايك او هيل كونتاكت ده بيحصل برونيشن. This pronation is shortening the limb because the height of the limb in pronation is less than in supination. نمرة اثنين لما الفوت تو جو انتو برونيشن بيحصل ايه؟ بيحصل فورسفول رابد انترنال روتيشن اوف ذا ليج الانترنال روتيشن اوف ذا ليج هيعمل ايه؟ هيعمل لي انلوكينج اوف ذا نيك يبقى انا اول ما بعمل هيل كونتاكت زي ما الدكتور عمرو هيشرح ببقى الني اكستندد بس وانس ام تاتشينج ذا جراوند ذا نيك شود فليكس اند ذن جو اب اجين ذيس فليكشن تو اوكير ذير شود بي انلوكينج اوف ذا نيك ذا فوت از ريسبونسبل ذيس موفمنت اوف ذا انلوكينج اوف the knee to allow some flexion and this flexion will decrease the height of the leg and this is the absorption shock mechanism of the Musaad Kinetics. Kinetics Kinetics is ground the action force in the center of pressure is the point at which the force are considered to act. When a bell misses ground during the heel strike, okay, with a maximum loading on the outer side of the heel, then it goes up, up, up at the uh, pushing or propulsive phase to, to be at the level of the uh, second or uh, first metatarsal. This is the pathway of the center of pressure across the foot during the stance phase. Lastly, muscle control. I'm not talking about all muscle control, but I'll take a few things. During heel contact, 
there is a, a strong force to, to plantar flex the foot. We well, are in human anatomy and the function of the tibialis anterior is to control this movement and to prevent the slapping of the foot. But here is the tibialis anterior mask immediately in foot. When I do the first part to touch the ground is the outer side of the heel. This forces the foot into pronation. So I have to, the maximum power to control should be opposite in the medial side of the foot to control the process or to control the excessive pronation to prevent excessive pronation. Okay? But playing my heel contact, the, the, the active muscle is the tibialis anterior. And during propulsion, I have to pull the heel into various, so the active muscle will be the tibialis posterior muscle. But when we are standing on the ground, actually the insertion of the tibialis posterior and tibialis anterior is fixed to the ground. And actually what is mobile is the, their origins. And the tibialis anterior originating from the lateral side of the tibia. Okay? With the tibialis posterior, what the origin of the fibula? Maximally lateral. If we look at the arrangement, we will see that they give you maximum control on rotation of the leg. So when we are standing, actually, what is mobile is their origins. So they can control the position of the foot, whether supination or pronation, through rotation of the leg. And this can explain why, when we have flexible flat foot, uh, flexible cavus feet, the, the weight bearing does not correct this flexible flat feet because the balance of the rotation is shifted to external rotation of the leg, and this external rotation of the leg will produce the cavus position of the foot. So we can achieve flexible foot that adapt to the ground and shock absorb shock, and rigid one, uh, rigid coolant to push. And this could be achieved by a combination of active and passive mechanism. Did we miss any function of the foot? T function on the hash and the foot. Passion. and beauty. Al-Hayya, passion and beauty, a very important function of the foot. And for the sake of passion and beauty, all the biomechanics of the foot are discarded. <laughs> I will waste your time a lot. I hope I didn't do uh, so for you.